My name is Charles Kreiner, and I'm the artist in resident at the Museum of Print History. This is my brother, Andre, that uh, helps me drive me around here. I'm kind of old, so uh, he does the driving and so forth, whatever I can get it to. Uh, I, want, I thank you for coming and taking a look at uh, me and my work. I guess this work is really me, if you, if you look at it that way. And I guess really what, we got a little movie, a little YouTube movie, and we're going to put that on in about five or ten minutes. And it'll kind of talk to you about me and about what I do. And then <clears throat> I'll go a little further with it. And then if there's any questions or whatever, then we'll, we'll, we'll discuss. Okay. Can you put it on? Mm -hmm. When I was about five, uh, my, my mother introduced me to crayons. And she showed me how you could draw on a window pane with a crayon. And uh, we had an oil lamp at that time. And so she showed me how you could take a rag and put kerosene on it and rub that crayon image off. And boy, I thought that was magic. So that was my first introduction to the art. started uh, doing posters for churches and all my teachers back then they all said that I was pretty good at art and that I should be an artist so naturally as people tell you more and plus my grandmother was a very very big uh, inspiration to, to my art career and the more people tell you that you're gonna be an artist then the more you ingrain that into you uh, that that that's what you want to be and so after a while that was nothing else for me. I just had to be an artist. To, to talk a little further about my art training, we used to, there used to be a canning company. What they would do is they would buy the whole field from farmers in Athens, this, peak comp this uh, canning company, and then they would hire just about the whole town of black people to go out and pick the peas and bring them into the cannery and can them and distribute them. So, so if you lived in Athens, then you got the whole concept from the from from uh, picking the peas to canning them to distributing. So that's really where I got my my first training. I'd love to draw. I was interested in commercial art, but I wanted to reproduce some of my drawings. <clears throat> and at that time, uh, a line reproduction was kind of out of the question for us because it cost too much money to get it done commercially. The process is uh, to draw on a stone with a lithograph pencil. And the lithograph pencil is a grease pencil. It looks kind of like a china marker. So you draw onto this stone, and once, it's, once you finish your drawing, you etch it. What I use is nitric acid and gum arabic. And you pull that solution onto the top of this stone. And what happens is the nitric acid actually opens the pores of the stone. You can't see it. It's a chemical reaction. But it actually opens the pores of the stone the gum arabic pushes the grease from the pencil down into the pores. And it desensitizes the non-image area. And all that means is as long as I keep it wet, I can take that roller and roll ink on it, and the ink only sticks to where I've done the drawing. What you do is you run it through the press, and you get a mirror image. It's a fascinating process. It's the only printing process that where you can you can produce a print that looks exactly like a drawing. But with lithography, you draw onto that stone and whatever you draw, regardless of how minute it is, it will print if you're if you're a good printer.
until about uh, 1964 <clears throat> when I enrolled at uh, Texas Southern University in Houston, Texas. Uh, and I had never seen really a black artist before. And my first day there, I went to the student union to tell you how important teachers are. I went there and I saw the work of Dr. John Biggers. I don't know if anybody knows him here, but you might Google him and look him up. He was a great, great artist. But I saw his work there. There was a group of drawings that he had done uh, when he was in Africa, South Africa. In 1957, they had one exhibit. And when I saw those pieces of art, that really changed my life. So I didn't meet him until about a couple of days uh, when I got ready to go to the art department. And I got there early. So when I opened the door and walked in, I saw this little man and he was hanging drawings and paintings in the, in the hallway. And so I said, he says, uh, real, with his voice was real rough. Well, oh, hey man, he said, uh, uh, are you an artist? Are you gonna, you gonna take art? And I said, yes sir. He says, uh, uh, well, what, what do you got there? You got, you got some drawings? I said, yeah, and I had my little cardboard portfolio. So I sat on the, on the floor and opened it and got ready to show him some, uh, some drawings and paintings. And he says, no, no. He says, no, don't do that. He said, I want you to come and help me. He says, we have to hang these paintings in print because all these students are going to be coming in at 8 o'clock. So we got to get the art department ready. That was another step in my life. Because whenever a teacher comes, and I hadn't been no further than 40 miles from home up until then. And when you have a teacher to say that, and you've already seen his work, I got onto that Ferris wheel, and the faster he turned it, the more I held on. And I, that's been a part of my life all the way up until he, he passed in, uh, in 2002. Uh, I even worked with him. He developed a lung problem, and uh, so he had to uh, uh, work at home and work in my studio. So I was fortunate enough to work directly with him for the last maybe six or seven years of, of his life. So really, all you see here is just really mirror images of uh, somebody that I have really admired all these years. And, and he told me more than once that the great thing of a teacher is to have students to continue his work. Of course, there's no way that I could ever continue his work because he, just, he was just amazing. But I can still work and so forth and so on. Uh, I usually start most of my drawing, most of my art on the stone. Although you see a whole lot of color here, <clears throat> usually I do uh, an addition of lithographs. Let me just choose one. I'll say the, uh, the, uh, the girl there, uh, what's the name of those flowers? Uh, Birds of Paradise, yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> I went to South Africa, and uh, I went to uh, Johannesburg. And there is a place, Alexandra, that's kind of the suburbs of uh, Johannesburg. Has anybody been there? It's with jo Johannesburg, Johannesburg is like just like Houston with the big buildings and everything going and so forth and so 